Verse 4, I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. The appearance of them is as the appearance of horses, and a horseman, and as horsemen, so shall they run. Like the noise of chariots on top of mountains, they shall leap. Like the noise of a flame of fire that devoureth the stubble, as the strong people set in battle array. Before their face, the people shall be much pained. All faces shall, ga shall gather blackness. They shall run like mighty men. They shall climb the wall like men of war. And they shall march, every one on his ways. And they shall not break their ranks. Neither shall one thrust another. They shall walk, every one in his path. And when they fall upon the sword, they shall not be wounded. So you got this army coming. And this army is so great that when somebody wounded as the people fight to defend themselves, it's going to be like you ain't killed nobody because the army's so big, a man dying don't mean nothing. Now, as we read all of these allegories, brothers and sisters, what we're trying to do is explain the language that we read that Christ speaks, that we read that the book of Revelation speaks. So we have to go into the prophets and find examples where the same kind of language was used before. What happened to Egypt happened already, but what did the sun, the moon, and the stars go in dark when Egypt was destroyed by Babylon represent? It represented the government and the power of Egypt being destroyed. So when we read about the things that are to come in Revelation and what Christ spoke of, what do the sun, moon, and the stars mean? Is it talking about the literal sun, the moon, and the stars? Or is it talking about something else? And we go into the dark parables of old to understand these parables that were spoken to our generation. That people was just explaining and got everybody waiting for a day when the sun in the sky going to go black. And the moon going to be red as blood. And the stars going to fall from heaven to the earth. It didn't say they was just going to fall past earth. It said the stars of heaven shall fall to the earth. Brothers and sisters, that's all of them. All the stars that you look up in the sky at night supposed to come and hit this place. No. No. Mm -mm. The scripture don't talk about nothing like that. Go ahead. <laughs> Brother, go ahead. Verse 10. The earth shall quake before them. The heavens shall tremble. The sun and the moon shall be dark, and the stars shall withdraw their shining. And the Lord shall utter his voice before the army. And for, for his camp is very great, for he is strong that executeth his word. For, for the day of the Lord is great and very terrible. Who can abide it? Now, here in Joel, it says it is the day of the Lord, and it's his wrath, and this is his army. But everybody is making this army to be the saints. Who in symbology, in symbolism, follow him from heaven on white horses. But we just read that when Babylon was attacked, Medo-Persia was his army. When Egypt was attacked, Babylon carried his net to catch Pharaoh and his army in. So the weapons and the, the, the ability to go and wage war and take over another kingdom is being given to them by God. They are his army. Am I just talking to be talking? Let's go to Jeremiah 25 and let's see what God called the king of that army. Jeremiah 25, brothers and sisters, we have to rely on the prophets because the apostles are explaining to you what the prophets said. When you get there, brother, Jeremiah 25, read verses 9 through 11. 9 through 11. Behold, I will send and take all the families of the north, saith the Lord, and Nebuchadnezzar, the king of Babylon, my servant, and will bring them against this land. Wait, who? Who, who, who coming? To, who coming against Israel? The families of the north and Nebuchadnezzar. His what? His servant. I'm his servant. Everybody out here is like, hey, I'm his servant. Brother Elijah just said, I'm his servant. <laughs> Brother, I am a minister here. I am your servant. You have spoken correctly. But no, I understand what you were saying. I was just throwing that one at you. Nebuchadnezzar is the servant of Yah. Now somebody tell me he ain't. Just because of how you feel, I don't care. Who is that man? Or who was that man? 
That man who was called king of kings on the earth was the servant of Yah. He served his purpose. I got a purpose. If this man is my servant, then what is his army? My army. <laughs> We'll continue, please. Just go ahead and finish that, bro. Um, against the inhabitants thereof, and against all these nations round about, uh -huh. and will utterly destroy them, mm -hmm. and make them an astonishment, and a hissing, and a perpetual desolation. Mm. Moreover, I will take from them the voice of mirth, and the voice of gladness, and the voice of the bridegroom, and the voice of the bride, the sound of the millstones, and the light of the candle. Do you know what all that represents? Darkness. Ain't a can I'm taking the light of the candle out of the place. This place is dark. Go ahead. And this whole land shall be a desolation and an astonishment. And these nations shall serve the king of Babylon 70 years. Okay, go over to the same, same book. Go right over to chapter 27. Chapter 27. Same book. Go over to chapter 27 and let's just read verses uh, 6 through 8. And now have I given all these lands into the hand of Nebuchadnezzar, the king of Babylon, my servant. He and just letting us know that this man is his servant, y'all. Go ahead. And the beast of the field have I given him also to serve him. The beast of the field serve him. The nations of the earth serve him. Continue. And all nations shall serve him and his son and his son's son until the very time of his land come. Now... <laughs> I've heard that be taught that today we are serving the son, son of Nebuchadnezzar. That is not true. His sons is dead. The Medo-Persians was not his sons. The Greeks were not, neither were the Romans. But they are teaching his son and his son's son to be the empires that follow. No, this is talking about them and it say you're going to serve his children what for them 70 years until the time of his land come at the end of 70 years israel was let go free did that happen without the time of babylon coming to an end or did the medo persians take babylon, the took babylon. come on in the days of his son's son in the day of who his son's son in the days of Belteshazzar. and as a matter of fact belshazzar wasn't even his literal son he was the son of his general, Nabonidus, who took over. But he was just a son after Nebuchadnezzar's order. People don't know that. Nabonidus was in charge. When Darius came and attacked, Belshazzar was second in command in the kingdom of Babylon. Nabonidus had been left <laughs> and was sitting in another land. And his son, he let him keep the capital city. But his father was in charge. And after he and after Belshazzar was killed and Darius took over the city, then his father Nabonidus gave up. But because you don't read Nabonidus in the scripture, he don't exist. He's not a part of the story. We got to study, y'all. We got to study. Go ahead. So read verse eight. And it shall come to pass. That the nation and the kingdom which will not serve the same Nebuchadnezzar, the king of Babylon, and that will not put their neck under the yoke of the king of Babylon, that nation will I punish, saith the Lord, with the sword and with the famine and with the pestilence, until I have consumed them by his hand. So when he said, I'm going to punish the world for their evil and the wicked for their iniquity in Isaiah 13, how is he going to punish them? With the power that is taken over, that if you don't follow their laws and what they're setting them in order because the powers that be are ordained of him what is that going to cause for your nation punishment but who is this punishment from it's from god all the nations of the world are under that if you rule the whole world is that not correct just okay let's keep going because i want to get i want to get y'all out of here let us go now back to joel chapter two because joel chapter two is put in the end time I'm talking about past us. Joel 2 still ain't happened yet. That war we read. 